Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and last time I left you off, I had some pieces printed for the sleeper simulant. I had to print some more pieces, and then I had a piece currently printing. Well, I've printed all of the pieces, and I've acquired some hardware. So let's continue building the sleeper simulant. Let's do it. Are you ready? Go. <laughs> Ah, uh, welcome back. Last time I left you, there was a piece printing on the GMAX 1.5 XT Plus, and this is it. Here it is, this is piece C. C, it's really, really stringy, and the parts where the supports were are really kind of terrible. I don't know how satisfied I am with this piece. I'm still gonna use it because reprinting takes a long time, but I'm gonna use this as something to learn. So with this filament, I think I have to change some things. This is the all professional 3D purple PLA. And it looks like right here, the, the supports kind of pulled away kind of tough. And right here, a piece fell off. You can see that it should be done like that, look like that, but it doesn't. So this piece is not perfect. And look how stringy it is right there. That's just crazy pants. So this piece isn't perfect, but um, I'm gonna, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that right now because I'm using this as a learning experience. So, so in this case, even though I'm not satisfied with the piece, I'm still gonna use it because I think it's for the most part usable, whatever. And then there was piece D and it looks like this. Actually, this printed really well. This printed on the Robo and this is with the Protopasta Natural PLA. It's a, it's a good material. It, it turned out okay. So where the supports were back here kind of messed up just a little bit. It didn't really congeal right. And the supports under these small sections didn't, it didn't make it turn out very good. Um, oh, all the supports I put around here, I actually ended up accidentally ripping out the trigger. Oops, I did glue this back in and the trigger is good to go. So it made this piece problematic that Kirby had to fix where the built-in supports for these square pieces right here and they didn't come as far down as the bottom part of the model, which meant they were printing in midair. Kirby fixed that, fixed them all. All of the pieces that exist on mymanyfactory.com are now fixed and ready for printing. A couple more pieces and they turned out great. Almost great, they're so close. <sighs> Look at, I don't know if you can tell right there. See how this is lifted off the build plate? Right there, yeah, it's supposed to be stuck down. It should be flat, but it's not. Well, since it did kind of <laughs> warp a little bit, it sure made it easy to remove off the build plate. There it is. Hey, this isn't a bad piece. I would take that piece. That's a good piece right there. Also is the smaller piece and the sight. Let's see if this comes off without a fight. That's what I'm worried about. I don't want to break it. I got it. And the supports come right off. And here, if you look, that's what the back of the piece looks like after you remove the support material. I think it did a good job. It's not perfect by any means, but this is definitely usable. Awesome. There it is, the last piece. Let's get this off the build plate. Ooh, it's on there good. Ha <laughs> ha! Look at that. Came off. All right, there's some support material. I do need to clear that. And then we're good. This is the last piece. Oh, this is exciting. With all of the pieces printed, now we have to go find some metal rods. The printing details on mymanyfactory.com specify 4.8 millimeter rods. I'm in the US, not a lot of things here are measured in millimeters other than 3D printer things. So I'm gonna head to the Home Depot and see what I can find. Let's go. Well, here we are at Home Depot. I'm gonna get parts for the gun. I need to get some metal rods to go in between the plastic pieces. Follow me in. Oh, here we are. These will do nicely. All right, I'll pick these up and pay for them. Awesome. All right, we're back. Back out to the car. I got, I got some of these metal rods. We should be good to go. Let's get back to the house, it's starting to rain. It's always fun going to Home Depot almost at closing time, but look what I got. Here's these metal rods. They, uh, they're 
they're screws. <laughs> oh, well, that'll work. It gives it more surface area for the glue to bond to, and I bought some of this. This is the Loctite Super Glue, and this is the gel control. This is gel control, so it should be able to hold the pieces just great. I've had awesome luck using Loctite Super Glue with my models, and these I'll have to cut to size. Uh, let me see if I have a tool for that. I do. That'll work nicely. Measuring isn't always my strong suit, so I've got the metal rod in this piece, and I know that this has to slide on here, but there's a small piece that's gonna go right here and into here, so I need to measure for that one first. I measured for it, it's this right here, and now I'm gonna cut it, let's see. That worked. Let's put it in here, fits. Now let's slide it into place. Um, okay, I gotta take that out first. It's complicated. Oh no, there's a space. Okay, I gotta trim a little bit more off. See, this is the hard part. Okay, trimmed a little. That's a good fit right there. And then, in there. <laughs> okay, this looks, this looks kind of good. Of course, I'm going to dry fit everything first because it'd be silly not to. Next is this piece. Let's slide that on. This is becoming very real, you guys. Ooh, ooh, okay. So right here, you can see that this kind of raised up a little bit. I'm gonna either gonna have to trim that down or I'll probably just trim it. This is where it starts to get tricky. Here's, let's see, this is PC. I think that's right. And then there's another, and then this gets another one that goes to the top, but I gotta take the tag off first. All right, I got that piece off. Let's slide this down right here. Okay. That's in place. Let's get piece B, B. Put through this hole. Okay, and then, ooh, almost fell over. All right, so here's the last piece. Uh, there's a small piece that fits in that top hole right there, and it'll sit like that. Um, I'm gonna have to trim these to size, that's for sure. Actually goes up there pretty far. Um, let me trim some of these, just a sec. Okay, I'm gonna trim these while they're in there. This, be a, this could be a huge, huge failure. <sighs> okay, one more. <laughs> uh, am I dumb? I might be dumb. This is hard, okay. See if this fits. See if I trimmed it too long or too short. <sighs> okay, I'll put in that extra piece in just a bit, but <clears throat> never mind that it spins. Oh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get back. Look at, there it is. <laughs> this is huge. <laughs> oh man. Okay, <sighs> I got. <sighs> Okay, one more dry fit. So I got this piece here. Let's see if that's long enough or too short for this section right here. Ooh, too short. Okay, I gotta trim a new piece. Just a sec. 
Ah. <laughs> I need bigger space. Okay. Okay, I'm holding the gun between my legs and I'm currently using my... Hey, didn't... Okay, I'll take that. Okay. Okay. This goes here. Holy crap. Let's see how far down the rabbit hole goes. Oh, okay. That I can understand. I gotta cut it in the gun one more time. There we go. Oh my goodness. Uh, okay. Here it is. This is the sleeper simulant. All dry fit and put together. It weighs a ton. Oh, I'm not even done yet. Okay. Now I gotta glue it. I still have some of this Loctite super glue, the ultra liquid control left. So I'm gonna use that in this area. First, what I do is I squeeze some down. There's probably a better way to do this, but whatever. Okay. I'm gonna put some on the threads. Don't drip, don't drip. Okay. And then some at the top, just because, why not? Okay, that's now glued, and this is running low. Now let's put some in here. Now, because these pieces are gonna fit together just right, I'm gonna have to put some on the flat pieces too. Here we go. Ah, dripping. <laughs> Boy, this isn't my um, this isn't my skill set. That's for sure. Now I need to get this piece and put it through the center, just so it all lines up right. Yep, just like that. On this piece here, I said I was going to trim this bit off. I know I could probably heat it up, but it's just going to be oh, easy enough for me to trim it down. It's already looking better. <laughs> People that actually make props are probably, no, don't do that. I do what I want. Let's try a dry fit. Okay, I think that'll work. I added some glue here and now I can slide this piece down. Why won't you, okay, er, er. come on. Okay, it's in. But because it's only held in by one rod, I have to hold this whole assembly down until it dries. So I will see you in a few minutes. All right, I think the glue is dry enough where we can keep working on it. It's a little, it's a little, eh. I don't want to wait. Okay, look at, look at. I think it's dry enough. Let's keep going. Okay. That's here, and then, and then this is going to go down into there. Let's just dry fit it one more time. I don't trust myself. Rotate. It's gonna work. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, I'll, I need more hands. 
I'll put some glue right here, right here, here. I also have to stick some right in there and along that thing. Okay, maybe a little right here, a little right here. Yeah, it's gonna work. And I pre glued that hole down there. Okay. That looks on. Okay with where it's at. Oh, this could happen. Okay, next piece. So here's that. I'm gonna put some glue on the end of it. I'll just drop some in because I like to, and then that'll, that'll go right here. Okay. This one, a little bit of glue right here. Glue right here, glue right here. Okay, that's in. Last one. I'll put some glue right here, right here. Glad I bought more glue, I'm almost running out. Maybe epoxy would have been better. Here we go, last piece. We're in. Okay, everything's gotta dry now. So I'll be back in a couple of minutes. I don't wanna push my luck because Usually I take things way too fast and I don't let the glue dry properly and then I try to attach things and things fall off. So I think I might have to call it good right here, but uh, there we go. <laughs> it's huge and with the metal rods it makes it really heavy. It, it's gonna be fun. Okay, let's call it good for now and then in the next installment, we will glue on the mag and the, the sight and the, the front and back mag holders. Awesome. I'll talk to Bill Duran and see if he'd be willing to help me paint this thing. We're so close, you guys, we're so close. So close, okay. Thank you for joining me for part two of printing the sleeper simulant. I keep looking at this because I'm just scared. Uh, like this video if this is fun so far. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions about this. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. Throw me a dollar via Patreon if you want. I'm never going to require it. As always, I will do this for free as long as I can. All I would ask in return is a social high five. And speaking of high fives, as always, high five. He's Joel Telly and he's printing 3D like some Pokemon, a gun from Destiny. And when you call him a nerd, he'll stand up proudly because he's packing some heat from his YouTube family. He can review printers till he falls to the floor. Then he'll give them away like Oprah in 04. There's the Wombat, Volsbot, G Max XT, then a break for Red Bull and Lobo's Taco Crispy. Printed Koozie in his hand for his drink. He sets up his GoPro and prints out a bender bank. So send him a dollar to put in his head or a self addressed envelope for a sticker instead. There's a nerd vlog on boxings and Q's and A's and he'll open your mail every single Friday. And of course you can't forget that pancake bot and filament sonic please and Joel's sweet little sign. And they printed this printer at Holodex Studio like Lando Calrissian and Freeze Dried Han Solo. So show your support on Patreon or subscribe and as always, high five.